Hello, beautiful people. <laughs> Welcome to Wisdom Bites. <laughs> Today is Father Craig Friday. Father Craig, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Am I facing the right way? I'm not used to this camera thing still. Yeah, I think yeah. I try to put the chairs a little bit more behind the table so we kind of nice, naturally nice. angle. But yeah. Well, that's Hope. great. I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Good. I'm wearing the same thing I was last time. I'm yeah. lovely. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you you're look looking like you're looking very maroon and gold today. Thanks. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. I, was, I actually didn't have any blue jeans because oh. I love wearing this shirt with blue jeans. But um, okay. So Fair. I got the work pants on. That's right. <laughs> Getting yeah. work done. That's right. Yeah. Um, so welcome to Father Craig Fridays. This is the time in which uh, you can send in your questions and Father Craig and I will talk about them. Um, Father Craig, before we get started, um, this is going to be a different episode than the format we've normally done. That's right. So we've been doing uh, sort of a silly question and then three serious questions that have come in from uh, our audience. Um, but today we're actually going to tackle just one big question. And so since we're changing up that format a little bit, I'm not going to ask you a silly question. Okay. I'm just going to ask you, Father Craig, what is something that brought you joy in the last week? Oh, that's so easy. You already know my <laughs> answer. So I got to go to Tennessee and Knoxville for a wedding and uh, it was the wedding of our previous um, focus team director and one of our previous missionaries, uh, Marianne and Casey O'Neill. And uh, we got to celebrate that wedding with them. And it was uh, just a great joy to see that. Holy marriages have been my joy this year. Just lots of them uh, going on, really give you a lot of hope and things like that. So um, it's been wonderful. And, and that was just such a, an incredibly great experience just to share in that with them and um, to see how that sacrament can... Um, show and share the love of God with others. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Yes, I did know. The, <laughs> you knew my answer. You very knew it right good away. suspicion. Um, I forgot to set the timer, so I'm going to do that right now. Okay. See, so look at this. Now you can see the things that happen behind the scene. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Normally I would have just snuck it out yeah, onto the table like, and beep. don't worry about it. All yeah. right. Um, yeah. So we are, we are going to handle this new format and we've realized uh, with this show, with this uh, podcast that there are times when uh, the question deserves more than the time we can give it, which actually happens quite a bit. Uh, and so from time to time, we're going to try to just give it, devote a little bit more time uh, to um, some of these more difficult questions. And this one is specifically pertinent um, because of, of the season we find ourselves in. So Exactly. Yeah. So let's just get into it. Boom. Um, the question that's come in from one of our listeners is, could you talk about the preeminent evil of abortion mm -hmm. and what that means in November for voting? Is a vote for Biden complicit in sin? So I'm gonna frame the, <laughs> I'm gonna frame the conversation maybe a little different than this. So okay. um, maybe one things we're always concerned with is uh, um, who should we vote for in the election? Mm -hmm. And the way the church answers that question is we say we're not going to endorse a particular person uh, nor party. Um, rather, we really want to equip our, um, our our members, right, all of you Catholics out there, um, in uh, the work of discerning according to God's will and His truth, um, the best, uh, the true goods at stake, and uh, the best means for achieving those good things in our society through our political system. Um, and that's called the virtue of prudence, uh, sometimes called the practical uh, application of wisdom. And so being Our Lady of Wisdom, uh, we were concerned with higher truths, and we want to look at things of the world in the light of God's revelation. Um, to uh, always put first our relationship with Jesus Christ, to uh, integrate into our lives more deeply um, the ways that we are to live so as to one day share an eternity with God and with each other uh, forever. And uh, so the church isn't going to say, hey, vote for this person. Uh, the church is not going to say, hey, um, you know, this is the party that you need to be a part of. Uh, no, we're going to tell you to be Catholics, and we're going to tell you to follow Jesus Christ, and we're going to equip you for the issues at stake. Um, and so I I'm not going to tell you if it's a sin or not to vote for Biden. Um, we, we will answer that in a, in a broader sense of uh, moral theology, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and then, of course, we do want to talk about the preeminent evil of abortion, uh, because clearly that is an intrinsic evil, which means that it can never be justified in any circumstance to, to commit an abortion. There's no way that that can ever lead uh, to uh, the good, like that can never be allowed to achieve a good. Okay. And this is one of the basic principles of moral theology as Catholics, is we can't do evil things in order to achieve a good end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and an intrinsic evil means that a particular action can never be considered good. 
And so okay. an abortion, the, innocent take, the intentional taking of innocent life um, uh, it can never be considered uh, something that is, is allowed or acceptable to do as Catholics. Um, and so um, the bishops of our, uh, of our um, uh, country in the United States here uh, give us some really great resources to help us with this. And if you haven't read it yet, uh, Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship is a, a really great document. Uh, and there's some things within that document that um, we're going to touch on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just sort of setting it up. Um, sure. Any any thoughts or things uh, on that while we're getting started here? So um, pull this up here. No, yeah, I think that that lays the groundwork pretty well. Okay. Um, we're going to get a little bit more into the specifics of it. Um, where, where can we start when we're thinking through right, who do I vote for? How do I weigh the issues? Right. So uh, one of the, the very first and most important things is the formation of conscience. Mm-hmm. So uh, this conscience is really where God speaks to us in, interiorly. This isn't the same thing as how I just generally feel about things. Uh, this has to do with the principle of truth. And as Catholics, we believe in absolute truth. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh, there are things that, regardless of how we feel about them, are, are true. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, the, the, of course, the greatest source of truth for us as Catholics is revelation, that uh, the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ teaches us um, the truths of existence of, of God, his plan for the universe, for creating the world, making mankind, um, and how we ought to live in order to be in relationship with him and with one another um, and eventually share in that relationship for eternity in heaven. And so we have to seek to conform ourselves to the mind of Christ. Yeah, That's a simple way of putting it. We're not seeking what's Craig's opinion on everything, mm-hmm. uh, per se. We're not seeking what, um, you know, how, how so-and-so feels about the issue. We're seeking truth, and now we're seeking to apply those truths to particular time and circumstance. Okay. Okay. So first we have to be clear about what truth is. Um, and that's uh, the big part of forming conscience. Um, and so um, what that means is we have to be familiar with the issues. We have to be familiar with what our faith says about the various issues. Mm-hmm. Um, and another basic thing is we always are wanting to will the good, and we do not want to ever will evil. Okay? Um, this is a very important principle um, that we, we have to be seeking to choose the good, mm-hmm. not to choose evil. Right. And so we have to be very sh- sure that the thing that we're intending, right, um, that, that it's not an evil thing. So I mentioned earlier abortion, and that's just one of the big questions we have about as Catholics. We, 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 it's very clear to us, according to the truth of God, not my opinion, not, not how I feel about things, that, that abortion is uh, 100% not allowed for us as mm-hmm. Catholics because it's the truth of God that human life is uh, sacred from uh, conception to natural death. And so that's not, um, that's something that we have to, to, to form our consciences. We have to conform our wills and minds to the truth and revelation of Jesus Christ um, and to will that good, okay? Um, and so uh, we, we can't ever sort of will abortion, Right. Right. That would not be acting according to conscience. That's not like uh, an opinion that we get to like, oh, well, do I accept that or not accept that? No, that's according to the revelation of God, that that is an unacceptable thing for us. Um, as Catholics, um, and really for any human person, uh, ultimately. Um, And so uh, then we don't want to be mistaken about what is the true good of things. So we have to understand the principles. We have to understand what we say about uh, the good of the human person, about marriage between a man and a woman, uh, about the religious freedom and these things. We want to understand those principles. What does the church teach? So we have those things firmly in mind. Then the question of politics is, what is the best means? So first of all, in any given situation, what are the goods at stake? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, um, you know, how is human life at stake in any particular policy, right? Mm-hmm. What about the dignity of the human person, about things like jobs and, and just wages and immigration and capital punishment and racism and um, abortion of innocent life of youth in Asia, the life of the, um, usually the elderly or those who are um, like terminally, in, Ill. terminally ill or paraplegics, things like this. What are the goods? What are the true goods at stake? So first we have to know what those truths are. Then we have to apply them to the particular circumstance to understand what are the goods at stake in any particular political issue, policy, um, uh, you know, political candidate, all these sorts of things. Then we have to think about um, 
what is the best means to achieve those? And this is usually, uh, this is where Catholics can legitimately disagree. Once determining what the goods at stake are, what are the best ways to achieve that as a whole for the common good of all of our society? Uh, and so we have to then um, take those truths, apply those, and deter- discern the true goods in the situations, and then apply those um, to a particular time and circumstance. And we may legitimately disagree on that. You may say the best way to achieve this common good is in this policy of um, immigration. And another person over here says, well, the common good also includes all these other things, and these are the other issues at stake, and the best way to achieve that is this policy here. And we may have legitimate disagreement on those things as Catholics who are both willing the good of the dignity of the human person, of the life of the human person, that we both want that yeah. as a whole for the, the, you know, the common good. But we might disagree about the means of achieving that and okay. which ones is the best. And that, that's an okay place. And this is why we have to have serious discussion and debates and, and to really um, have those conversations in a civil, uh, respectful manner yeah. um, in that. Um, and then, uh, again, I want to highlight, we have to be willing the good and not evil, right? right. Uh, we have to will the good and not the evil. Um, now, another principle here that's uh, really tough is something called the principle of double effect, okay? Um, this is um, a situation where you want to will a particular good, but an evil will also result from that action. Okay. So... Uh, what's an example of this? Um, you know, let's say that, uh, you know, again, it's not always certain. So you're not certain that the evil is going to result, right? Okay. So let's say, for example, um, I see somebody who is in need and uh, I my intention is to save their life. So let's say there's a car wreck on the side of the road. And uh, so I run into that situation and I'm trying to save that person. My intention is to save that person's life. Now, let's say inadvertently, because of my lack of knowledge or whatever in that situation, um, the person actually dies as a consequence of how I remove them from the vehicle. Maybe they're injured in a certain way. Maybe a good example is sometimes if you have a puncture wound, you actually want to leave it in rather than take it out so as not to cause the bleeding in like an artery or something. Sure. So let's say my intention is to save that person's life. And so I pull that thing out and I'm trying to put pressure on it, but I don't really know what I'm doing. And the result is the person dies from it. Okay. Um, the principle of, of double effect says that, um, you know, it's, it's an acceptable action that I took because my intention was not to kill them. My intention was to save them, but the evil also resulted from it, um, which, um, is not the ideal, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but, but it is acceptable. So there's some principles of double effect. Um, let me just read it to you here. Uh, EWTN has a really great little resource on this and, uh, I really appreciate them for putting this out. But the principle of double effect is used to determine when an action which has two effects, one good and one evil, may still be chosen without sin. Um, This principle is attributed to St. Thomas Aquinas, so solid, right? (laughs) Uh, Who used it to show that killing in self-defense is justified, okay? Which is a whole other can of worms we can talk about another time, but this principle um, makes that not a sin to do that, okay? Okay. Um, With respect to voting, it would allow under certain conditions the toleration of the unintended evil of another for proportionate reason. Um, So this is this is uh, really a challenge in the issue of abortion, because um, maybe we don't think a particular candidate, um, either candidate is the best candidate. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, we look at all the issues and the goods at stake and we discern those properly, especially human life is at stake, but also other means of that things like, um, people are very concerned with the issue of racism, of immigration, of poverty, um, and all the various goods that affect human life. So we're all in agreement. Human life is what we want. We do not will abortion. So if you're, if you're voting for Kenneth because they support abortion, you're committing a moral evil. Okay. Okay. I mean, if you're doing that because they support abortion, that is a moral evil. Okay. Um, The same is true if you're voting for candidate because they support the death penalty uh, or because um, a particular candidate, um, you know, is going to treat uh, immigrants in a particular way um, that is an evil. And you're like, I want that to happen. And you're willing that evil Mm -hmm. right to take place. Now, we're not talking about any particular circumstance here. So please, um, a, a grain of salt as you listen to this, please. Um, presume that I'm, uh, that we're both, uh, we're both wanting the good here. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, like we can't, we can't ever vote for somebody because they're willing to evil, but let's say you discern all the goods at stake in the, in this particular circumstance. And you're like, well, the best way to promote the common good of the whole is this. And this is also proportionate to, um, you know, the good of, of these other individuals. And you, now you have to make a choice between people that have, um, you, you want the good, 
mm-hmm. but you don't see this way, which supports one thing and, and ignores all the other moral issues that are at stake um, surrounding human life. Um, so uh, I tell you what, let's back up a little bit. I'm going to read you something from Forming, uh, Intention, uh, Forming Consciences. It's um, Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship from the Bishops. Uh, paragraph 27 and 28 are what I'm going to, if anyone has that with them. I'm not even sure 20 minutes is going to be enough to talk about. This. Okay. <laughs> we'll do our best. Uh, going down. Okay. So 27, 28, 29. So two temptations in public life can distort the church's defense of human life and dignity. The first is moral equivalence that makes no ethical distinction between kinds of issues involving human life and dignity. The direct and intentional destruction of innocent human life from the moment of conception to natural death is always wrong and is not uh, just one issue amongst many. It must always be opposed. So um, just because two things are evil doesn't mean that one thing is not more evil than the others. right? Right. And so we say that the issue of innocent human life is a preeminent um, m- moral uh, uh, consideration that has a gravitas that's um, at the top, right? Yeah. Uh, and so uh, we can't treat it as though it's the same as the issue of, um, uh, I will say, immigration, right? Uh, both are important. Mm-hmm. Both involve human life. But the innocent taking of human life is is on its own sure. much, much higher because yeah. the, the, the children have no means by, by which to protect themselves, right, mm-hmm. or, or the like. And we can, we can make some arguments there for immigration as well, but we can see maybe the difference in that gravitas. Mm-hmm. And so we can't equate those things as being exactly equal. We have to okay. distinguish between, um, you know, the, the different kinds of issues involving human life and dignity, okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, another thing it says is that paragraph 29 says, the second issue is the misuse of the necessary moral distinctions as a way of dismissing or ignoring other serious issues to human life and dignity. So this is when we say, for example, that abortion is the only issue that really matters. That's what it's talking about. Yeah. You know what else also matters for human life and dignity? Well, uh, they make a list of it here, um, of different things. So, um, good example would be the environment. Um, the poor and the vulnerable persons, racism, uh, death penalty, unjust war, torture, war crimes, failure to respond to those who are suffering from hunger, lack of health care, pornography, redefining civil marriage, compromising religious liberty, unjust immigration policies. They're all serious issues, right? They're all serious issues. Um, and uh, the challenge of our consciences requires to act in these. There's not optional concerns that can be dismissed. And if we um, are so concerned with one issue, now it is a preeminent issue. We're not. We're not going to. We're not going to pretend it's not. Okay. But to pretend any of those other issues are not serious moral issues and worthy of consideration in conversation with that, um, while well, the church is telling us that we're not fully. Um, uh, uh, teaching the church's uh, teaching on, on human life and dignity. We're distorting it. Okay. Um, we're singling that thing out and ignoring these other things that are also issues. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so uh, when we get to something like the principle of double effect, uh, when we're looking at the issues involved, we have to consider all those goods and then we have to say, okay, what is it that we're willing? Okay. And what is the best means to achieve that? Um, and so you might be able to, and again, I'm not. I'm, again, I, I'm not endorsing a candidate. I'm not endorsing a party in any way, shape, or fashion. And as a church, we don't do that. What I'm saying is, there may be situations where it's morally um, acceptable to vote for a candidate because you will a particular good, mm-hmm. dignity of human life, on particular issues, right? Um, and uh, you consider that this politician, while not sharing all of your values, is the best means to achieve the greater good for the common good. Um, and so that way, for that reason, right, a particular moral evil might be tolerated, right? Sure. Not Never endorsed, never encouraged, never accepted. Um, and that might be an acceptable reason to vote for a candidate. Now, the, the fact of the matter is none of our candidates are perfect, and all of them do have <laughs> serious moral issues involved with them. Yeah. Um, you know, for a candidate, for example, like Biden to endorse uh, abortion, it's a moral evil, period. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, for... President Trump to uh, embrace something like capital punishment, um, you know, uh, or maybe, and again, there can be a distinction here about some of the immigration policies or something like that. We can say that there's a true moral evil at stake right mm-hmm. there, you know, if, if, it's, if that's clear and it's not always clear sometimes. Abortion is very clear, right? Sure. Um, but some of these other issues are not always so clear. Um, and so, uh, 
you know, principle double effect says the action that we're intending must be morally good or indifferent as an object, motive, or circumstance. The evil effect must not be directly willed, only tolerated. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the good effect must be caused at least as directly as the bad. Okay. As the result of, of, of the cause itself. And then the last part of it, so all four of these must be met, by the way. The good effect must be proportionate to compensate for the bad effects. So if it's not equal or commensurate in terms of the value of the good and the bad at stake, right? So, for example, you can't will abortion for the sake of a stimulus check. Right? You can't tolerate abortion, so that's the wrong thing. You cannot tolerate abortion for the sake of a stimulus check. You think, oh, the good at stake is the stimulus check, which um, you know evokes this, you know, this this dignity of human life because now we have a better economic means to achieve that. Um, you know, to to um, that would not be that would not meet this this thing of the good effect must be proportionate to compensate for the bad effects okay. because they're not equal. Right? Gotcha. You know, twelve hundred dollars in my pocket is not equal to. Um, the death of an the death of a child, yeah. right? And so uh, you have to you have to weigh those sorts of things. Now, um, best option is not to have to settle for the principle of double effect, right? Right. This is only uh, helpful to us in situations where um, there's not a choice between um, a good can a worthy candidate and an unworthy candidate, right? Um, when all candidates seem to be unworthy, then this principle can be maybe a helpful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have to form our consciences according to the truth. We cannot will the evil. We can only will the good, right? And uh, then, uh, so we have to, and then we have to use the virtue of prudence and grow the virtue of prudence of discerning what the true goods are at stake so we can be mistaken about those goods sometimes, okay? And then we have to consider the best way to, and, and consider the best means to achieving that good. And if we, in that, in good conscience, formed according to the truth, willing the good, um, now look at these both uh, unworthy candidates, which I think most of us would agree that both candidates are probably unworthy in terms of all these moral issues that the church teaches on according to the revelation and truth of Jesus Christ, um, are not going to be uh, 100% on board with the things that the churches teach. And so you're going to there's unworthiness in both candidates in mm-hmm. that regard. Okay. Now we have to make the prudential judgment and say, now what's the best means, okay, to achieving the goods that we're willing of human life and dignity, of, um, you know, the good of marriage, of religious freedom, um, of all the various goods that are at stake here. And that, and that's, uh, that's what this is all about. So the church isn't going to make your decisions for you, but they are going to inform you according to the truth of Jesus Christ. They're going to let you know what morally acceptable and unacceptable acts are. Okay. So that you can uh, form your conscience according to the truth. And then it's going to say your responsibility is to vote according to an informed conscience, um, willing the good and not the evil. Um, and there uh, may be times and circumstances where you will the good and an evil results, um, according to these principles, where it'd be morally acceptable to take that action. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That was a lot. It is a lot. Um, if you're listening to this and you've gotten this far, I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, Don't give up. Don't yeah. give up. Um, one thing you said at the very beginning that I think sort of undergirds everything else in our political climate that you talked about. Um, there is room to actually discuss these issues and figure out what is the best policy for, uh, Mm -hmm. the good of our country to respect human dignity to all of these things together. And it has to be from this place of, I am assuming that one, I want the good for Mm -hmm. every human being around me. And I also assume that the person across from me wants that same good, maybe in a different way. Sure. That's right. We want (laughs) to, we want to civilize the conversation. Um, and that begins with the presumption of the good on the part of the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and there may come a time when, when it becomes very clear that um, the person does not will the good. Yeah. You know? So if we can agree, for example, um, as Catholics, and, and we ought to be able to do this because it's part of the revelation of, of the Lord, which means it's an absolute truth and, and, and non-negotiable that something like abortion is an intrinsic evil. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, if we can agree on that as Catholics... And yet, um, we have some legitimate room for discussion on the other issues of human life, right? And things like capital punishment and immigration and racism and uh, some of the economic care for the poor and these things. Um, we have to have that basic ground because we're not factions in the church. Right. We're all meant to be one family seeking to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. And there can be some legitimate disagreement there about the best means to carry out that mission. 
Uh, even Paul and Barnabas, both in love with the Lord, separated at a certain point um, over some other disagreements, but they both loved the Lord and served him. Yeah. Okay. Um, but so long as we have that basic foundation as Catholics and agree to teachings of the church on that, then the prudence, right, prudential judgment as a place for authentic discussion and dialogue about the best means of, of um, you know, the issues of human life and about marriage and about religious freedom and these things as well. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Father Craig, how do you feel about all of those things? Um, it's a lot. And I, I recognize um, for you out there who are maybe looking for um, this information, I'm hoping that our conversation here can be a starting place. Um, or maybe it's a continuation of some of the thinking, or maybe there's some distinctions here that intrigue you. Um, or maybe you're just angry, okay, um, and just frustrated with, that's not what I wanted to hear from you, Father, or from David, or something like that. Um, you know, sometimes when we simplify things to easy answers, uh, we miss out on a lot of what the Lord desires to give to us. Um, he wants to draw out of our heart a deeper faith, hope, and charity um, in many of the circumstances of life, and he's constantly wanting to conform our hearts to truth, and this is the purpose of forming a conscience, right, is to come in to know, love, and serve uh, the truth, okay? Um, but it's not love without the truth, and it's not truth without love. And we have to hold those things in tension, and uh, that's going to create a lot of um, sanctifying moments for you and for me. And, um, you know, this is not easy for me to talk about. It's not easy for uh, me to try to, to give guidance on, but it is worth it. And uh, my hope is that, uh, that the frustrations or difficulties or the experience that you're having um, in all of this, uh, you'll encounter the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Well, Father Craig, thank you so much for uh, answering that question, really thinking through it, praying through it and, uh, doing research to, you know, grab from the, uh, the bishops and what mm. they've said on this and the teaching authority of the church. Um, yeah, hopefully if you're listening to this, you, you've yeah, got that starting place. You can keep thinking through, okay, who, uh, best fits the moral compass that, uh, the truths of the church, how all these things line up together. Um, yeah, if you've made it this far again, um, please be sure to check out our other uh, Wisdom Bites segment, Testament Tuesday, and uh, follow us on social media. And guys, be nice to each other in the comments, please. Thank you. Um, I think that is all we have for today. Great. If you have other questions you'd like to send to us uh, for Wisdom Bites, future uh, discussions, you can send them to podcast at txstatecatholic.org, podcast at txstatecatholic.org. Our Lady of Wisdom. Pray for us.